Now let's go to the project and its co-host Lisa Wilkinson who last night announced she was stepping down from the program. And typical of Lisa Wilkinson, the announcement was full of drama and self-pity. The last six months have not been easy and the relentless targeted toxicity by some sections of the media has taken a toll, not just on me, but on people I love. Don't get me wrong, I'm not above criticism, far from it. I'm human and I don't always get it right. None of us do. But by God, I've tried. I've given this job everything I have. Oh, oh Lisa, love, uh, really, you're not working in the salt mines for Siberia. It's three hours a week on television. Someone provides your dress, someone does your makeup, your script's written for you. That was entertainment reporter Peter Ford giving Lisa Wilkinson a much-needed dose of reality. And as they say, timing is everything. Here is Peter Ford again. She says she's quitting and effective immediately. That, to me, is the most interesting part of the story when you've got the end of the ratings year right there in spitting distance and she's not even sticking around for that. As for Wilkinson blaming sections of the media for her treatment in the last six months, perhaps she would have preferred we not report on this monumental stuff up. The high profile Brittany Higgins rape trial has been delayed following Lisa Wilkinson's acceptance speech at the Logies. She was told four days before the Logies that any mention of the case could delay the trial. She did it anyway and it generated a lot of publicity. Now, Wilkinson's lawyers argue that she was just proud of her work, to which the judge replied this, mightn't good journalism be mindful of criminal proceedings and remembering to insert the magic word alleged. Now as for tearfully insisting she always tried to get it right, well, that's not the case. In 2021, she falsely accused a coalition MP of taking an inappropriate photo of a woman, only to admit in June in a now-deleted tweet, she posted this, in March 2021, I published a tweet about Andrew Laming. I now accept that the claim made about Dr Laming in that tweet was false and defamatory. I unconditionally withdraw that claim and apologise to Dr Lamming for any hurt and offence caused to him by reason of my conduct. So just to clarify, it took only 16 months to admit she was wrong there, just like she was wrong in her book when she claimed that she was treated with disdain by her Today Show co-host Carl Stefanovic on their last appearance together. She wrote, how could he still treat me with such uncaring disregard? For two hours, I sat there feeling completely useless. The Today Show was now the Carl Show. What was the point of me even being there? The cameras were on me, so there was nowhere to hide. And yet, I felt completely invisible. Really? Well, the footage from that day tells a very different story. Oh, I love that song. Good morning, folks. It is Monday, the 16th of October, and we've got pink on today just for Lisa and her honeymoon return. Lisa, good morning to you. How good is that? <laughs> yeah. It's so lovely to be back. Nice and to see you. And thank you to everyone for all your beautiful messages. We, um, we had a great day and we've had a fabulous honeymoon, but back to work today. Where did you go? We went to beautiful Byron Bay because we love Australia. Yeah. I <laughs> And who can forget that during COVID, Wilkinson joined commentators in demanding harder, harsher lockdowns for the community, showing just how out of touch she was with reality. And to say her criticism was partisan and selective would be the understatement of the year. And if Gladys Berejiklian isn't up to the job, then she needs to step aside and make room for somebody who is up to the job because she's... She stuffed this is, you know, in, that's a technical term. Seems, Absolutely. Yeah. And this is, we didn't want to be the test case, but mm. good on Daniel Andrews for recognising the mistakes that have been made here in New South Wales. Victoria keeps proving every time that the minute you get an outbreak there, you stamp on it and you get back to normal life again. 
Yes, that would be Victoria, where more than 5 million people endured the world's longest lockdown and where the state government, despite having the country's harshest restrictions, managed to record the highest COVID death rate in the country. You nailed it there, Lisa.